Thank you. That comes through nicely, Guru. Okay. Over to you. My screen. Cool. Okay. So thanks, Kiran. So uh, as Kiran said, I'm Sudesh Guru. So I lead the uh, data service analytical platform in turn. So today I will talk about the uh, some of the linked open vocabularies we have built uh, for the ecosystem science community. Uh, so so the, uh, the talk is purely on the work we have done as part of TURN, and then the vocabularies we have built, um, and then the, the, uh, how we have built it. Kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, so just to provide a bit of a perspective, so uh, I think most of people uh, probably know TURN. So TURN is, a, uh, is a one of the increase projects. So the main intention of the turn is to collect, collect, and publish the uh, terrestrial ecosystem data. Uh, so if you look at the terrestrial site, it is of um, uh, anything on the land. Uh, so we we do a substantial uh, uh, data collection. Uh, so you know across turn. Uh, so the major component of the turn is like an observing uh, platform. So we observe at the three different scales. So uh, the one is at TV, what we call it as a landscape scale. So this is like a complete um, uh, continental scale observation, typically the remote sensing observations and the model derived uh, data products. Uh, the next scale is what uh, is called, what we call it as like a turn ecosystem surveillance. So these are all the regional scale observation. Uh, so these are typically the 100 meter, 100 meter plot um, uh, created all across Australia. Uh, collect the vegetation baseline, vegetation, and then the soils information. This includes the samples as well, samples of the soils and then the vegetation. Uh, the next uh, uh, scale of uh, observation is the terrestrial ecosystem processes. Uh, so this week, uh, you can call it as more as like an intense monitoring. Uh, so these are all about 14 sites, highly sensorized, within and then additional to that around 34 flux towers, uh, collect data, the carbon energy flux, the phenocam, acoustic sensors, and then every five, year, every five years they do the vegetation survey as well as part of the site. And then uh, uh, previously there was some, the bird survey uh, uh, was done as well in that, that site. Uh, the sensors, you know, depending on the type of sensors, the observation is made from every 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 minute to every half an hour uh, as well. So, so just to provide a bit of a perspective, so in the turn, uh, if you want to put in one picture, this is how I think at least in the current observation it looks. You know, we have a fair bit of a flux towers, and then the remote sensing satellites. And then we do an you know, aerial observation platform. Uh, so use a, a terrestrial laser scanner and then the survey sites. Uh, these are typically 100 meter, 100 meter plots. And then when there's a, if there is a multiple observation has been done uh, and then you can have a, have a similar data products that may, uh, that may uh, derive, for example, uh, using a terrestrial, you know, ground-based terrestrial laser scanner you can scan the entire site and derive the vegetation structure, and then when you are when you do the human observation, you can do the way you can derive vegetation structure as well. So when they uh, using the remote sensing data products, you know they they use the uh, they use the ground based calibration validation to derive the vegetation structure at the continental scale. So, so even at the single variable can be measured at a different scale at a different platform. So that's why you know we always struggle during the organization aspect and how effectively we describe the data. So if you look at uh, uh, so that's why it's the complexity is quite high. Uh, you know where there is a multiple of the human observation and the sensor observation and then. You know, some of the observation is at the point, for example, the flux tower, um, and then the models are the gridded, you know, raster images. And then the uh, data collection is, you know, from a different platform instruments, and then the methods um, were used, multiple methods were used measuring the same thing. Uh, so just to provide a bit of a context, so this is a, in a structural growth form. 
so on the left hand side on the table, so that is the table generally they use if they do the human observation. Uh, and then the based on that, they tag it, okay, what is the structure of work form? And then the same uh, similar data is derived from the remote sensing, which is on the right hand side uh, as well. So they are the comparable data set, but the measurement and then the scale is, bit is completely different. Uh, similar to the vegetation height, uh, the left hand side is uh, typically on the vegetation stratum that was measured in a plot. Uh, in a multiple layers and then the very similar thing uh, using the remote sensing data products uh, that uh, is derived as well. Um, so, so the main reason we build all this vocabulary is to harmonize uh, all this, you know, the different multi-scale of observation uh, so that the user, when they come to the uh, data discovery portal, they know where this actually, uh, the observation is coming from kind of a thing. And then so it, it also enables us for the harmonization of the of the data set uh, that is um, uh, that we observe. Uh, so we use the control vocabulary uh, as an harmonization point um, at a different scale. Uh, so as part of that, what we do is you know we build a vocabulary to describe each and every artifacts of the observable property. So the, we describe what is the platform uh, where the data is measured, the instrument that is used, and then the spatial regions, you know, because uh, we index the site on a different spatial region, including the Hebrew, uh, sub-Hebrew, echo region, states and territories, et cetera. Uh, so, and then uh, we, we, we describe it as a spatial temporal scale resolution, et cetera, and the people who are, uh, there to collect the data organizations, the procedure, the methods, and then the observer property. So uh, what what we have done is, you know, we we follow the uh, the yeah, so ontology uh, to uh, to build this, you know, especially the instance of uh, platforms. Uh, so most of the if it's nothing of a non-instance thing, we use a you know a SCOS vocabularies to build the ontology otherwise. And then the effect of the ontologies, if there's already there, the terms, we reuse it. For example, in the platforms, you know, we reuse a fair bit of already there in the GCMD. And then we, if there is any certain instance of a platform, uh, we describe that. Uh, for example, in our case, even the ecological site is a platform. And then the flux tower you saw in the picture, that is also a platform. And then the instrument is attached to that one. So which we describe using a SOSA sensor. If we are describing an instance of an instrument, otherwise we use just the use a squash vocabulary to describe a type of a uh, uh, sensor. Uh, for the unit of measurement, we use a QDT uh, ontology. And then uh, we work very closely with them. If there is uh, some, uh, unit of measurement is not there, uh, we, say, we just uh, send a pull request to them. Uh, they add that as part of the ontology as well. Uh, so all the spatial resolution, temporal, temporal resolution, everything, you know, we just uh, use uh, what is in the GCMD because that fits uh, well for us. You know, we don't have to do much extension. Uh, so the observable property is a tricky one. So we have like a wide list of classifier, even in the observable property, we classify a bit of classification we do. And then we try to align with the end with this and then the uh, CF uh, convention vocabularies. Uh, so partly because, you know, the, a lot of the, uh, the flux data, they use a CF convention. Uh, so we, we align with them. So we use reuse of those vocabularies if it's not there or the definition doesn't mean, especially ecology is a funny thing. You know, the definition, you know, there, there are a lot of like a regional centric definitions for how they do it, um, especially the terminology that they use if there is anything, if there is a conflict. So we update that, but we provide a relationship, uh, uh, you know, in this way, using a SCOTS relationship uh, so that, you know, the, you know, if anybody, the users would know the, uh, you know, the, the relationship between the different vocabularies. Uh, the other thing what we do is, you know, even though uh, we use a CF convention vocabularies, vocabularies as a uh, one-to-one, we just create an instance. Uh, uh, we, we create a vocabulary of that one, and then we put it as like an exact match. Uh, this is purely for the operational perspective. So uh, 
if we just you know run through the third party uris sometimes their system is down the uri doesn't resolve then again we need to do a fair bit of our work um and so that is so in that way you know a lot of things are beyond our control if how they manage the thing so in this way at least you know it resolves to the uri what is in, what is in our control and then the user can know okay it is an exact match to uh, the uh, the cf vocabularies uh, kind of a thing so just to provide a bit of an example of you know if you if you go to the you know for example if somebody is looking at the you know the flux server data set uh, so the you know it should have like a, the ebru echo regions everything where that tower is and then the platform under the platform is described the uh, you know which tower flux tower is uh, assume that you know if we are looking at like a like an observed property radiation uh, the instrument that was used uh, and then the observed properties radiation and the procedure so most often we provide a bit of a procedure or all the spatial resolution uh, to uh, you know what is the, uh, it is a point resolution because you know it's a stationary tower uh, we tell it and then the temporal resolution because its data is about 30 minutes we provide that as part of the temporal resolution and then the content we publish is from the net cd of which is the content type uh, so if you if you look at for example in our data discovery portal this is assume that one of the random one i picked up in a great western woodland flux tower one of the data release if you look at the platform it says that the great western woodland flux station um, and then uh, you know if you click on that link and it shows you know, the complete details of the tower you know what it is and everything uh, and then the um, uh, uh, if you click on any of those instrument, it will tell what that, what that instrument is, kind of a thing. And uh, if you look at this one, so it tells you the exactly how we classify the thing. So basically, uh, the flux towers comes under the, the classification is a fix, fixed platform in our case, and then we uh, it's a flux tower. It's part of the flux tower, the instance of the flux tower. Um, uh, yeah, that that is how we classify uh, uh, in in our in, in our ontology. Again, in the field ecology, even, even the, each of the site is a uh, uh, is a platform for us. And then assume that if if you are looking at the vegetation, I, this is the basically the pipeline you can see in each of the uh, how the you know the uh, one of the uh, data is tagged uh, as part of the uh, um, uh, metadata when, when we are writing up the metadata. So in so in summary, so we use uh, uh, LOVs for the you know, consistent representation of the data. Um, and then, uh, so it has substantially improved the search and access and the reusability aspects of the thing as well. And then the lot of take what we have done is a reusable artifacts and then uh, you know, that can be used by anybody. Uh, so there are a lot of instances where the, you know, we have vocabularized a lot of the state government protocols and then you know they have downloaded from our linked data uh, website and then reusing that uh, as well. Uh, so the, we use these vocabularies uh, to across our multiple platform. What what we use to publish uh, uh, different varieties of data, including the you know, data discovery portal, the echo plots, which is a data integration platform to publish the plot data, and then the echo images, which is the uh, image repository of all the ecological. Uh, images that was that is collected at the turn so i provide a link to the um the vocabularies uh, you can have a look at that one um and uh, uh so finally i would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and their custodianship of the land on which the turn operates we pay our respect to their ancestors and their descendants who continue cultural and spiritual connection to this country so finally i would like to acknowledge the our term team then I put some URLs where you can go and uh, look at the favorite of the um, vocabularies we have built, not only for the turn, for the other projects as well. Uh, so I, I just wanted to insist that, you know, so what, uh, what you can see is from the, uh, the vocabulary size of the type, the instances we are still working on to integrate that into the viewer. What I mean is like, and if I'm describing the particular instance of a platform, that probably is not discoverable there, so we are still working on it. But all the vocabularies type, you know, is available. 
predominantly those are described using a scotch vocabulary so uh, all those you can you can you can search in that the link that we are i will stop there thank you very much